Hello, it's Miss Alana Day here, um, and I'm with my trusted baboon, Booksy. Say hi, Booksy. Hi, he's been on a reading journey with me over the last seven weeks since school's been closed. We've been doing lots of reading together, and it's been amazing. Um, he's also been doing the reading challenges, if you've been doing them. Um, so I look forward to showing you Booksy's reading challenges soon. Today, we are learning how to answer questions based on visual clues. So we're going to have a look for clues in pictures. And we're going to try and work out what's happening. And that is a reading skill. And that's called inference, to infer. We can do it with pictures. We can do it with films. We can do it with text, with things that are said. We try and infer things that are not said. Try and basically read between the lines or draw our own conclusions, okay? So we're gonna have a look at inference today and we're going to um, answer some questions based on visual clues. You ready, books? Lovely, let's have a look at this picture. What can you see? What does it tell us? 10 seconds. Brilliant, books, what can you see? He can see a dog. He can see fluff, he can see an empty cushion holder, okay. So those are the clues, so we've read the picture. What has happened? So now we're going to think about what we already know. We know that dogs like to play with things sometimes. And we know that um, sometimes they can make a mess. So we're gonna have a look at this picture. We can see the only person that's in this picture is a dog and there is a lot of mess. So we can infer, we can infer, or we can guess that the dog was playing with a cushion and he perhaps got overzealous and very excited and he burst the cushion open and therefore made a huge mess. Let's look at this question. How does the dog feel? How do you think he feels? Booksy thinks he feels remorseful. He feels sad at what he's done. Perhaps a bit disappointed in himself. Those are a lot of big words and lovely words, but how do you know that? It doesn't say on the picture. So how do you know he feels remorseful or unhappy? Okay, so Booksy's looked at clues that are not there. The dog is not wagging his tail. His ears are down. His face is straight. He's not smiling or barking or wagging his tail. So Bugsy, know, Bugsy knows that when a dog is happy, he does those things. So he has, he, he has inferred that the dog is unhappy because he's not doing those things. Who would know we got all that information from one simple picture? This inference thing is amazing, isn't it, Bugsy? Let's use our inference skills to work out what's going on in this picture. So the first thing that we need to do is read the picture. You might say, read the picture. Yes, we can read something even though there are no words on the picture. We can read it, we can work out what is happening by looking at the clues. Asking questions can help you looking when you're looking at a picture. You might want to say, why is the girl looking like this? Why is her hand on her head? Why is she in pyjamas? All of those things will help us when it comes to working out what we already know and being able to infer what's happening in the picture. So what do we already know? What do you already know about when somebody's sick, um, Booksy? Yeah, he, we already know that this is a thermometer and it's used to test temperature. We already know that if you're feeling unwell you might not want to get changed, you might want to stay in your pyjamas or in your bathrobe. We already know that when you're sick you feel hot so sometimes you want to test your head. So we've read the picture, we've thought about what we know and now book C is going to make an inference. What's happening? So Books' inference is the girl is feeling very unwell and unhappy. 
What did you infer at home? Did you agree? Lovely. So we're going to use these three simple steps to have a look at this picture. Okay, I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Read the picture. Go. You, you two. You're here to work as well, you know. It's not just the children at home. Pay attention. Okay. Tell us some of your ideas. Yes. Brilliant. Marvellous. Okay. Did you hear all those wonderful ideas? I bet you're going to copy the children's ideas, aren't you, Booksy? I know you, Mr. Mischievous. But you don't need to copy. Let's just use the three steps. Number one, read the picture. What can we see? Join in with me, girls. Who can we see? We can see a man and a little girl. We can see a computer and a table. The little girl is holding a kite. What's the title of this picture? Dad. So we can infer that he's her dad. What else? Well, dad looks very busy. And the little girl has got a kite in her hand. So what do we know already? That parents need to work and children like to play. What can we infer from looking at this picture? Well, that the little girl is sad because her dad's very busy on his computer and he can't play with her. What do you think she is thinking? Give you five seconds. What's she thinking? Shout out. Uh-huh, yes, great. Okay, do you see all those wonderful ideas? What do you think she's thinking, Booksy? Ah, oh, Booksy's ideas are very similar to yours. He's saying he thinks the girl is, um, wants to go and fly her kite, but her dad is busy and she's feeling a bit nervous or anxious. She doesn't want to disturb him because he's really busy, but she really wants to play. Do you think this is the first time it's happened? Or do you think this happens often? Mm, I'll leave you to think about that one. Let's have a look at this one. Look carefully at the picture. What can you see? Five seconds. Brilliant. And what does orator mean? Okay. I'm not going to tell you that one. I'm going to let you go and find the answer to that yourself. But we can have a look at the second question. Is he wealthy or is he poor? Have a look. Look at the surrounding. What can you infer? Is he rich or is he poor? Mm. And how do you know? What do you think? Okay, Booksy thinks that he's wealthy because of the place he is and the way he is dressed. Yes, the house that he's in, there's lots of books in the library. He's got a beautiful gold framed picture that's hanging above the fireplace. He's dressed very smartly in a very nice tailored suit. So we could infer that he is rich. And let's think about how do you think he might speak? So you want me to do one? Oh my God, but they're gonna laugh at me at home. You're not gonna laugh at me, are you? All right, thank you, okay. I think this character speaks a bit like this. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my humble abode. I am pleased to meet you. It's been going to be a marvelous evening. Do you think he speaks like that? Can I hear yours? You have a go. Look at this character. How do you think he speaks? Mm -hmm. Let's give them a clap at home. Those are wonderful. Those are wonderful um, ideas. Lovely, I think he speaks like that as well. Totally agree with you. In a minute, I'm gonna let you think of five adjectives that you could use to describe him. What five adjectives could you use to describe him? Write them down.
brilliant. Maybe you can ask somebody in your household to come and look at the picture and see if they can think of any adjectives um, to describe him. You can compare them. Books is one was intelligent. He only did one. He did intelligent. Did you write down intelligent? Do you think this character looks intelligent, Mr. Toad? Does Mr. Toad look intelligent? Hmm. Anyway, you could compare your adjectives with somebody else in your house. See which ones are correct and which ones are not. Oh, here's another one. Oh, that's a great question. Books is asked, why is this called Morning Surprise? Let's have a look at this picture. Why do you think it's called Morning Surprise? I'm listening. Why is it called Morning Surprise? Oh, yes, that's right. Because somebody went down into their kitchen in the morning and saw this octopus in their sink. Oh. So let's go through our three steps. First, we read the picture. Then we work out what we know already. Then the third step is we use what we know already to infer. So let's see if you can do this all by yourself, Booksy. Oh, he says he can see an elephant in a sink. He knows, sorry, it does say elephant, sorry, octopus. He can see an octopus in a sink. He knows that octopus like water. And that's why this octopus has come in the water in the sink. Yes, but that doesn't really tell us a lot. There were so many more questions that I have. Can you think of three questions that you would ask octopus if you saw him in your sink when you came down one morning? What would you ask him? Mm, write them all down. Write all your questions down. You can put them in the comments underneath the video or if they've been disabled, you can write them down. And when you see me next, hopefully soon, um, we can talk about um, this. And you can tell me your three questions. Okay, lovely. Really simple, really great. Let's go back to the objective. We are learning to answer questions based on visual clues and you have done that. You have been able to read a picture and answer questions. So well done. That's another great um, reading skill that we are developing in front. I'll see you later for part two. Thank you for watching. Bye. Say bye. Don't be shy. Say bye.